humans get hungry, we can just go to the local diner. But what happened when our dino friends got the munchies? What were their favorite snacks? And what did they leave behind? Do, fellow boneheads, it's time for another bone diggity mystery from the Paleo Files. I'm Allie. And I'm Sam. Today's mystery comes to us from the town of Hyde Park, Massachusetts. Fossil fan Lucy Costello wrote <coughs> Dear Sam and Allie, I've got an awesome mystery for you. One of my chores is to take care of our new dog, Stanley. You wouldn't believe how much the little guy eats, you also wouldn't believe how much he poops. So, my question is, if little Stanley can eat that much food and leave piles that big on the patio, how much did the dinosaurs eat? And how much did they... Uh, Sam, I think we get the picture. Disgusting question, Lucy. But a darn good one. I'll say. In fact, it's so good, it's going to be our question of the day. What went in? What came out? And to help us find out, I stopped in on our good friend, Dr. Bob Bakker, over at the Tate Museum in Casper, Wyoming. Dr. Bob? Yeah? I want to do another show. About what? What dinosaurs ate. What dinosaurs ate. That's cool. Are you talking plant eaters, meat eaters, omnivores, vegetarians? We want to do them all. We can do that. We can do that thing. We've got plant eating heads. We've got meat eating heads. We've got the teeth. We can do this thing. Excellent. All right. With Dr. Bob's help, solving this mystery is going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> and there's no better place to get some cake than at the Dino Diner. Welcome to the Dino Diner. Here, there's something for everyone. And it's the okay. perfect place to open the case of the Dining Dinos. Well, then what are we waiting for? Uh, primordial soup, please. At the Dino Diner, they're serving more than just french fries. A super deluxe burger like this is plenty of lunch for most of the carnivores who come here to feed. One brother burger. But back in the days when the dinosaurs were around, portions were a lot bigger. Good thing our waitress doesn't have to serve the gigantic sauropods. She wouldn't have been able to carry a sauropod-sized salad. There you go. Thanks. Enjoy a meal. How big were their appetites? To solve that mystery, let's pass the burger to Jim Farlow. Jim's a dino dietitian. He looks at some of today's big eaters to figure out how much the dinos ate. Well, we know how much animals of various sizes today eat, and so we can get some calculations of how much you would expect an animal to eat for a given size if it's either warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Okay, before we go any further, let's make this perfectly clear. Critters like these elephants and us humans are warm-blooded. Animals like this gator are cold-blooded. Warm bloods need to eat way more food just to keep themselves warm. Cold bloods can live on a lot less food, but they're slow and dorky. And for a 70 ton sauropod, if it were warm blooded, it'd eat a couple million kilojoules a day. Okay, you don't know what that is. Well, it's about that much hay. Come and get it! That's a lot of hay. And there wasn't anyone around back then to bail it up all nice and pretty. In fact, there wasn't even any hay. The only thing on the sauropods menu were leaves and twigs. And according to Detective Jim, if they were warm-blooded, it would have taken them all day just to feed themselves. And that doesn't leave much time for other activities like sleeping or making baby sauropods. So I don't think they were warm-blooded. I think it's more likely that they were cold-blooded. And based on what we see in cold-blooded animals today, we can estimate that the amount of food a 70-ton sauropod would need if cold-blooded would be 
gripe about that much. Six bales of hay. Jim's theory sounds pretty good, but here comes trouble. You got that right. Hey, hey, Dr. Bob, is Jim Farlow right? Was Brontosaurus cold-blooded? You know, I've been hearing this theory that Brontosaurus was just too big to be hot-blooded. Well, I'll tell you, if it's a hot-blooded animal alive today and doing well, that's five times as big. It's the blue whale. And it eats lots and lots of tiny little things. That's very clever at doing it. Filters it with a big mouth. Well, Brontosaurus did something very clever to be hot-blooded. It has a little mouth, but doesn't stop to chew. It just swallows. Globida, 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 globida. That solves the problem. You can swallow without chewing. You don't waste any time. And you can be really hot-blooded. But whether he was hot-blooded or cold-blooded, a giant like Brontosaurus would still need a whole forest all to himself to fill his belly. I would guess that a cold-blooded 70-ton sauropod if you were putting it on really good pasture land like we have here in Indiana today, you might have needed something like 25 acres to support it. But back then, good Indiana pasture land didn't exist. Heck, Indiana didn't even exist. So to get his daily supply of nutrients, Mr. Sauropod would have probably needed more like 250 acres. So you can kind of visualize them as gigantic multi-ton locusts moving over the landscape, stripping it clean, and then moving on to feed elsewhere. Well, no matter how you slice it, the prehistoric lawnmowers known as the sauropods sure ate a lot. No doubt about it, but what exactly do they eat a lot of? Stick around for a paleo taste test. We'll be right back. 